Welcome to The Graceful Warrior, the podcast where grit meets grace and strength is matched with righteousness. Join us as we delve into the stories of those who navigate life's battles with poise and determination. Each episode is a new chapter in the quest to embrace challenges with an open heart and a steadfast spirit. So lace up the combat boots and let's embark on this journey together. This is The Graceful Warrior, where every battle is an opportunity to rise with grace. Well, hello, Graceful Warriors. Welcome back to the Graceful Warriors show. I'm your host, Monica. So how was everybody's Mother's Day? I hope you were able to either one of two different things, spend some time with friends or family, with your sons or daughters, or you know what? Just have that quiet downtime where you just get to go, you know, my maybe your sons or daughters are not close by and and you can just sit down and relax and you know we all we all are hungry for those type of times where it's just quiet you know and um so i hope that your weekend was great that you had a relaxing time and if you were with family i hope you had a great time you know for me I spent it uh, with my boys. Um, we went into town. They took me for lunch. And we just got to sit down and just laugh and joke and just be family, right? And uh, family is everything. It's, it's, uh, it's a time where we really need to understand um, the importance of family. So, and then, hey, how did you did you experience the Northern Lights? I mean, if you've got pictures, share them on facebook.com forward slash Graceful Warrior 8. Come over and check out the Graceful Warrior Facebook page and share your pictures of the Northern Lights. Um, I did not even know that the Northern Lights were coming until... One of my friends, Jake, had actually let me know that it was happening like within that five minutes of at him in his own home state. And I was like, no way. Well, I wish we we got it over here in Idaho. And he looked it up real quick and he's like, you're going to get it in like 30 minutes. And I was like, no way. And. We did. We got it 30 minutes later and I had never seen the Northern Lights. So it was really great to be able to go out there and go, whoa, you know, and see that. So I could check that little thing on the list of saying, yes, I've seen the Northern Lights, right? <laughs> so um, send your pictures. I'd love to see what you guys um, were able to, to see out there. Let us know at least what state that was at you know you don't need to give prime location just say hey it was in illinois or hey it was in cali that you saw that share those pictures and um i'll put i'll put a couple of mine up and i hope you got to see it both days it came on um saturday it was a saturday night and it also came on friday night so how many of you got to experience both nights all right. I'd love to see those pictures. And then, um, yeah, that's about it for house cleaning. Um, I had just submitted all of my edits to my editor and then we are officially done. And then we will be releasing the book in June. So I will do an announcement saying, hey, the book is released. You can go out and buy it. I have been able to drop the price as low as I possibly can. And I am dropping the paperback book down from $12.99. I was able to finagle on Amazon. Now, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do on Barnes & Nobles yet. I'm still working on that one amongst family and church, podcasting, Bible study, all of that. So I will get to that one this week. But right now, as it sits, Amazon, I'm selling the paperback book for... 
1050, right? It was originally 1299. So we were able to knock it down and kind of figure out how we can do that. So 10, 1050 for the paperback, which that isn't bad at all. And then the ebook, I believe we were able to get it down to eight bucks for an ebook ebook. So don't quote me on that because I've got to go back and look because it was just numbers, 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 playing around with numbers on there for a while. And I have no idea what is now the price. So, uh, but you will be able to get that in paperback and ebook on Amazon. And then I will be able to go on Barnes and Nobles this week, get that set up for you guys. All right. So I wanted to pull away a little bit from the slaying the giants of, because I want to constantly mix it up and keep it real, keep it interesting for all of you today. And so I decided to look at it in this way. I, the title I want to call this episode is Understanding and Defending Truth in Today's Culture War. And the reason I want to look at truth is because there's so much going out there right now. It's kind of like, what is truth? And what are we to defend in the culture war, right? So I want to take um, just about, I think it's about five and a half minutes. And I want to share this video with you and then come back and uh, talk about what God says truth is. All right. Okay. So let's get into that. And... Uh, let me get this going here. Hi there. Many others like you have asked, what is truth? Let's find out, shall we? You can also discover more and read a longer answer on gotquestions.org. Here is your answer for today. Almost 2,000 years ago, truth was put on trial and judged by people who were devoted to lies. In fact, truth faced six trials in less than one full day three religious and three legal. After this, a very interesting conversation between the truth and Pilate took place. Jesus answered, You say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And what is truth? Pilate's question has reverberated down throughout history. In a postmodern world that denies that truth can be known, the question is more important than ever to answer. What is truth? Truth is not simply whatever works, is understandable, or what makes people feel good. Truth is not majority rules, nor is it defined by what is intended. Truth is not how we know, what is believed, or what is publicly proven. The Greek word for truth refers to divine revelation and is related to a word that literally means what can't be hidden. The Hebrew word means constancy or duration, implying something that can be relied upon. From a philosophical perspective, there are three simple ways to define truth. Truth is that which corresponds to reality. Truth must match its object. And truth is simply telling it like it is. Thomas Aquinas observed, it is the task of the philosopher to make distinctions. Making distinctions seems to be out of fashion in a postmodern era of relativism, especially in matters of faith and religion. The philosophy of relativism says the position of the absolutist is wrong, but why can't those who say absolute truth exists be correct too? The philosophy of skepticism simply doubts all truth, which ironically claims to know at least one truth, that you can't know truth. The patron saint of postmodernism, Friedrich Nietzsche, affirms at least one absolute truth, the truth that no truth should be affirmed. Pluralism unravels at the feet of the law of non-contradiction. Something cannot be both A and non-A at the same time and in the same sense. Mortimer Adler notes pluralism is desirable and tolerable only in those areas that are matters of taste rather than matters of truth. Hopefully, it's easy for you to see each one of these philosophies is easily disproven by their own definitions. When the concept of truth is maligned, it is usually for one or more of the following reasons. 
Anyone claiming to have absolute truth in matters of faith and religion is narrow-minded, arrogant, and exclusive. Is a math teacher narrow-minded for holding to the belief that 2 plus 2 only equals 4? Arrogant for insisting that this is the only right answer. Wrong for observing that all answers other than 4 are excluded from the reality of what 2 plus 2 truly equals. Yet another protest is that all that matters is sincerity. The problem is that truth is immune to sincerity, belief, and desire. Some will admit that absolute truth exists, but only in the area of science and not in the matters of faith and religion. This is a philosophy held by a logical positivist, to which all talk about God is complete nonsense. Those who hold to the notion that only science can make truth claims fail to recognize that there are many realms of truth where science is impotent. Anyone who makes the statement, <clears throat> science is the only source of objective truth, they have just made a philosophical claim, which cannot be tested by science. Why is it so important to understand and embrace the concept of absolute truth in all areas of life, including faith and religion? Simply because life has consequences for being wrong. Incorrect doses can be fatal. Poor investments lead to poverty. Wrong planes lead to wrong destinations. Consequences are highest in the area of faith and religion. Eternity is an awfully long time to be wrong. During the six trials of Jesus, the contrast between the righteous truth and unrighteous lies was unmistakable. The link between truth and righteousness and between unrighteousness and falsehood is demonstrated across the New Testament. In conclusion, Pilate asked millennia ago, what is truth? Many things can have truth, but only one thing can actually be the truth. Reality is, Jesus made the simple statement, I am the way and the truth and the life. A claim that validated itself and his deity when Jesus rose from the dead. Pilate evidently Amen. never knew the truth. Ignoring the truth always leads to undesired consequences. All right, that answers your question. What is truth? On our website, gotquestions.org, you'll find a much more extended article with citations and resource suggestions. If this helped you as much as it did, I'm going to stop it right there. And um, so I wanted to kind of show you all the different views of what everybody thinks that the truth is, right? But it's crazy. These days, truth is any and everything. I mean, were you able to find certain areas where different belief systems were saying that their version of what truth is, is exactly that? And you're just like, it, it's crazy. It's begun to be whatever truth wants to be to that person, right? And so, I wanted to take the time to go, okay, now that we hear about what the world is saying of what truth is, what does the Bible say that truth is? See, I think that a whole scriptural understanding of truth, it, en it encompasses more than simply honesty. See, to me, the Bible reveals truth as a moral concept rooted in God's character. I mean, Psalms 43.3 says, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Jesus is that light. He is that truth. It's interesting how Psalms talk so much about truth. You have another one, Psalms 25.5, that says, lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you, I will wait all the day long. Psalms 26.3 says, For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I will walk in your faithfulness. And then the ultimate verse, one of my favorites is Psalms 86.11. It says, Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. See, Jesus is the God of truth. 
Isaiah 65, 16 says, all who invoke a blessing or, or take an oath will do so by the God of truth. Who is the God of truth? We know it's Jesus, the Son of God. We know it's God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all three as one, correct? And it goes on to say, for I will put aside my anger and forget the evil of earlier days, because it's that one who invokes the truth by doing so by the God of truth. So, and then we noticed that his, hold on one second, I have a sneeze. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I was out and about in uh, out there today, and the allergies are just going. I need to take my meds again. So uh, his truthfulness, it embraces his, in all of these scriptures that we looked at, it embraces his steadfastness, his trustworthiness, all of these things that we we're reading, his eternal faithfulness. See, most commonly you have discussions of truth that have to do with basically speaking the truth, right? When you're not telling lies or making something up or adding to it what is not true, right? Well, Psalms 15.2 says this. It says, he who walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart. And then it's always that person that will constantly, no matter what that topic is, whenever that person opens up their mouth, truth is in their heart. Truth is what comes out. They walk blamelessly because they don't want to be held accountable for lies, right? Lying is the opposite of telling the truth. We all know that, right? Jeremiah 9, 3 says this, they bend their tongue like a bow, falsehood and not truth. has grown strong in the land for they proceed from evil to evil and they do not know me, declares the Lord. That's pretty scary. And that's what we're looking at these days out there when people are trying to confuse everybody about the political realm. Um, you got big time media that is trying to stretch the truth, not tell all of the truth, you know, and it's just, you don't know what to believe these days. And so how are, to, are we to discern truth? Well, the only way that we can discern the truth is by God's word, you know, and I have found that as uglier and uglier as things get right now, with trying to figure out what really is the truth in everything that comes up. I mean, do we really know what's going on at the border? We know we have Elon Musk that has gone there. You have all of these certain Hollywood stars that want to go and say, well, I want to go check it out and come back and report their truth in the matter based on their political beliefs, right? That That's all it is. If they are for um, Joe Obama, then they are going to say everything's fine. If it's chaos and they are for uh, 47, then it's going to be, it's a mess out there. And, you know, so it's based on everybody's political beliefs a lot of time with all of the things that are going on out there. But see, here's one thing that I have been learning and telling a lot of people as they are like, I get emails or people that I know up in town, you know, Monica, what is going on? How do you know this? How do you know that? Is that God never lies. Titus 1, 2 says this, in hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began. God just never lies. The Bible says that God is not only truthful, but he himself is the essence of truth. The reliability and the trustworthiness of his being were highly like important or, or significant to even the biblical writers in expressing God's truthfulness. 
That's the this is the word of God is the only thing that can allow us to stand on the promises. Jesus is the rock, the cornerstone. He will never fail us. He will never tell us anything that has not happened. Everything that is going to happen in um, in today's society is all we have all been told that men are going to be lovers of themselves. You know, they they don't want to hear the truth. They want to believe their own truth within them. Um, they want to believe that they they are gods within themselves. The self edification, the self worship the self this self that all, all of the selves are in there right but in expressing god's truthfulness jesus had to be truth god had to be truth in order for the scholars to write everything the fact that jesus says i am the way the truth and the life when scripture speaks of truth it refers to a completeness of moral integrity that influences how one thinks or even behaves. So Psalms 86, 11 says this, teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I mentioned this one earlier, but it, it begs to, to be repeated again in this one because of all of the chaos and everything going out there in the political arena that we have to learn to walk in God's truth. And then guess what? We won't be having all of the worry and the stress and what's going to happen and what is, what if this happens and listening to all of the lies that are just out there from, you know, unchristian podcast hosts that are talking about all of this stuff that's going on. And I have even heard vets say, no one's coming to rescue you. It's just you. Are you prepared? You better dig deep. You better grab your, your pew pews, you know, because this is going on YouTube. So I have to be careful what I say, <laughs> you know, and make sure that you grab those and you grab your food, you you buckle down, make sure you've got water, make sure, you know, you see all of that. There is the fear mongering in it. And yet he's trying, they're trying to tell you that this is the truth, that it's just, it's you and your neighbor. And hopefully you can stand your ground and get all the pew pews you can and load up all of the um, the things that go bang to put in the pew pews, right? You know, and it's just like, has anyone amongst all this chaos ever stopped to think about, hello, what about God? You know, I mean, like, even right now, and it was, it was pretty cool, was I was thinking about the whole thing about the Red Sea and the Israelites, they were backed up at the Red Sea. They had nowhere to go and they turned around and the sea was there and they're like, oh no, here comes Pharaoh. Here comes all the soldiers. You guys know the story, right? And I was like, you know, it almost seems like this as things get crazier and crazier as we get closer and closer to November to vote. And it's, it's amazing now that I've begun to flip the script in my mind and go like this as it gets darker with the pushing of the left's own um, demands of Americans to do this, that, or the other. I've begun to turn it around and go, wait a minute. None of this is true because I know that the Lord takes care of us. It's kind of like, stop. You pharaohs, you Sanhedrins, you government. And it's stopping them and go, wait a minute. What is truth? I know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I know that Jesus says that if we were to call upon his name, 
that he will answer us, that the Lord knows who his people are. And he says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And that Jesus says that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That means this government that is pushing all of this nonsense on us. And I'm like, well, wait a minute here, you know? And now it's realizing that and going, okay, let me get into your word because see, your word never fails me. Your word is my rock. It is my shield. I will not sink if I stand on the word of God. Everybody else can stand on their so-called truth and listen to all of the lies that everybody's putting out there, the media, social media, maybe you have friends or loved ones that are not quite awake to what's really going on. And they're spewing out all of their versions of the truth. But see, real truth is the word of God. God demonstrates that he is truth in the faithfulness and dependability of his word, his actions, and his dealings. It even says God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act and just sat back and said, you know what, never mind, guys. I was going to part the Red Sea. I was going to part uh, Jordan and let you guys all cross. But, you know, <laughs> I'm going to sit here, have some popcorn, and see what you all do. He's never said anything and not acted on it. Because Jesus says that his word will not return to him void. It goes out and it accomplishes all that he has set it out to do. So think about this. Has he ever promised and not carried it all the way through to the end to see the victory? No, he hasn't. It says that the battle is his, but the victory is ours, right? Let's take a look at Numbers 23, 19. And it says, God is not a man. The one that I just read. So he does not lie. He is, is not human. So he does not change his mind, right? And then 1 Samuel also says this in 15, 29. And also the glory of Israel will not lie or have regret for he is not a man that he should have regret. So he's not going to sit there and just like, out of all this stuff that we're going through, just going, well, you know, okay, now I'm feeling bad that I actually let you guys go through this. I, I'm just, I regret this. No. See, and, and I know that this is not even part of this episode, but I want to bring this up. In 2020, when um, the virus started, when our our vote got stolen from all of us, and uh, 45 had to step down, and everything was going on, a lot of people that follow him were heartbroken, right? And they don't know what to do. And everybody had to come inside. Everybody was dealing with it. Everybody was mourning, you know, all of that stuff. And I look back at things now, and if you follow any of the political fight, and if you follow 45 on social media at all, I have learned to pick up, you know, some of the lingo of the different things that people are saying, the wokeism and, and all of the things that 45 says. Some I agree with, some I don't, right? But one thing that I've looked at with all of the things that are being said out there is that they say sometimes you have to be shown what is going on, that you just can't tell people. See, we have sat there for many, many years as time as America has gotten worse and worse and worse. And 
how the government has been corrupt. People have been telling us the government's corrupt for so long. All of the three letter agencies, they're corrupt. They've been telling us that for so long, but we didn't listen. And we didn't listen to the truth. And so they say, sometimes in order for you to listen, you got to go through it. And I be really believe that that is true in this scenario, because how many truly knew of how big the sin of pedophilia was in our government? How many knew how big? I mean, if you knew, wow, you knew more than I did, because I honestly didn't know how big and prevalent that that sin was so much in our government. I knew that it was happening out here, but I would have never thought in our own government, you know, and you would think that Supreme Court judges were true and that they would honor their oath. And it's just like court systems are just being exposed, you know, and to me, it's like I see it as, wow, it really did open my eyes to truth of seeing everything that I was like, okay, I didn't know about this. Or I was like, well, I need to see it to believe it type thing. And so here we are. And, and I think that in the end, God is going to come back and go, now that I've shown you how wicked men's hearts can be, even though that's just a taste because men's hearts can get very, very wicked and dark and evil when they open the door to the enemy. And that time is coming later. But I think that with the Lord, it's going to be, now you've seen a taste. Now here comes the glory. And I think that we're also going to see a flip side. And I'm not prophesying, but I'm just, I'm saying, God is going to radically change some things, I really believe, um, because I do know of prophecies way back. And I'm standing on that because that is God's word. He cannot change his mind. He prophesied these words years ago, like early 2000. So guess what? It has to come to pass. Because see, like I said earlier, Jesus, when he speaks his words, they go out and accomplish all that the Lord has said, and it won't return back to him void. And so we know God's word holds true, and we can trust everything that he does. See, Psalms 33 verse 4 says this, for the word of the Lord is upright. It doesn't say, well, based on the scenario, you know, based on what he thinks truth is. It says the word of the Lord is upright and all his work is done in faithfulness. He does it according to his word. He remembers his word. He remembers his covenant. And you know what I think is so awesome is that you think about the promises that he's made to Abraham, Isaac, to David, to Joseph, all of the, to Noah with the rainbow. He promised that he would never destroy the earth with water. Next time it's going to be with fire. And I look at that and I'm like, wow, Lord, you still hold on to your promises that every time there is rain, you put out the rainbow and it says, when you see it and when all creatures see it, when all mankind sees it, they will remember the covenant. That was a covenant oath between God and man, God and the beast, or the, all of the animals, that he would never destroy the earth with water again. Has he? No. And it just like, it baffles me. I think it's so cool because of the fact of 
those are examples that we could look at and say, he's told the truth. How long ago was the flood? Eons ago. And he still holds on to his truth. And then on top of that, he still shows the rainbow. It's just, it's amazing. It's just amazing to see all of those, those things that God does. And you're just like, well, how do you know that God is true? How do you know that what he says? If you just stop and take a minute and think about those things, his rainbow. He, he said that he will establish Abraham's seed forever and ever. Look where, where we are today. And you're just like, oh, my gosh, you know, he is completely reliable. The Lord is, is rock solid, trustworthy foundation for life because he is entirely reliable. He is consistent in, in his being, in his character. God's laws and his instructions outline the way of truth that is meant to lead people even to him. Even the Bible says God's word is truth. The entirety of his word is truth. Even the logos, when you start getting into all of the Greek word meanings and all of that stuff, the logos, it says that he is the living incarnate word of God. Jesus Christ is truth. And then the infinite verse that all of you probably know, John 14, 6, where he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Which to me, that verse, man, it opens a whole lot up as far as Catholics. No one comes to the Father except through me. That means you can't go to your priest to get to the Father. You got to go to the real high priest, which is Jesus. See, scripture also says this, that, that the gospel message is truth. That the message of the good news of salvation, that Jesus is the only way to everlasting life with God. And you're just like, so I'm hoping that as I give all of this to you and get and start reading some of these scriptures to you, that you will begin to go, you know, man doesn't have any idea of what truth is. As we watched in the video of all of the different definitions of what mankind thinks truth is, they still have it wrong. And it's, it's just knowing that God is the only one that we can rely on that will tell us the truth, that he is the truth. He cannot lie. He doesn't change his mind. And he never fails to act. See, it's, it's really interesting that through Jesus, we can know the true God. And now we live in fellowship with that God because we live in fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God, right? And he is eternal life. So, and then you get into all of the stuff about the Holy Spirit, about being the spirit of truth. And that's a whole nother deep dive into the Holy Spirit. But I just want to encourage you and say, the Bible says that God delights in truth and that the Lord is close to all who call on him, to all who declare his truth. See, Psalms 145 says it like this. The Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, to all who call on him in truth. And that's the key word about calling on him in truth. And Jesus even says that we will have to one day worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's the, that's where we are right now. High value. Solomon's counsel even says this, buy the truth and do not sell it. 
wisdom, instruction, and insight as well. God takes pleasure in seeing his truth reflected in the character of you and me. He calls believers to worship him in truth, love others in truth, and always, always speak the truth. Jesus says in Ephesians 4.15, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way in him who is the head into Christ. And so I want to encourage you, make sure that you are listening to the right truth, not social media, not philosophies of mankind that they think that they are so intelligent they can come up with truth. And then next thing you know, you're in a battle of culture war of trying to decide and understand what is truth out there. See, ultimately, Jesus is the truth. And I'm going to end it with this. Zechariah 8.16 says this. These are the things that you shall do. Speak the truth to one another. Render in your gates judgments that are true and make for peace. So speak your truth. Speak it in love. Speak it in kindness. And speak in honesty. Hey, I hope that encouraged you today. And remember, it's a battlefield out there. You've got to lace up your combat boots. And until next week, have a blessed one. Peace out, everybody. And that's a wrap for today's episode of The Graceful Warrior. Thank you for joining us in the arena where grit meets grace. Remember, every challenge is an opportunity to wield the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith. Stay tuned for our next episode, where we'll continue to explore the battles and victories that shape our lives. If you've enjoyed the journey, please subscribe and leave us a review. Until next time, keep contending for the faith through grace and grit.